Today, Intel is killing CPU performance by default. Battle Mage could be dead. AMD is going all out on their next gen APUs, and Nvidia is getting worried about that monster APU. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, I have some terrible news for anyone who owns one of Intel's newer desktop CPUs, specifically their i9 and even in some cases, potentially even their i7 CPUs. And yes, this is a continuation to the issues Intel owners have recently been having while in certain games. It seems to have to do with higher default BIOS settings, but as I've said multiple times, this really doesn't seem to be an issue with actual motherboard vendors, but instead a problem with these Intel CPUs, but I'll get to that in just a second. First up, as you can see right down here, it looks like Intel is now requesting system and motherboard manufacturers to provide end users with a default BIOS profile that matches Intel's recommended settings. Basically, this appears to be these baseline profiles that we've been seeing crop up in BIOS updates from multiple vendors so far. The difference is that here they're actually talking about making it the default BIOS profile rather than an option that you can do later. This is the one that essentially comes with your motherboard if you end up buying it from here on out. And you can actually see that it says that they request customers to implement the Intel default settings profile as the BIOS default profile by May 31st. So we're talking by the end of this month, this massive change is going to go through. And to give you an idea of just how big of a change this is. We've obviously discussed some of these performance drops that we've been seeing when switching from the default to this new baseline profile that we've been seeing from uh, manufacturers, and it's pretty bad. We're talking 10, 11%, things like that. Well, here it more or less goes over it a little bit more. You can see they're mandating this new default slash baseline profile by default, which would lock the CPU's PL2 to 188 watts, while what most motherboard vendors were using before, these extreme and performance profiles, allowed up to 253 watts. So we're talking about a giant change here. Now, as I've been saying for quite a while now, motherboard vendors have been doing this for a long time, but it's only just now causing issues with the 13th and 14th gen CPUs. And by a long time, we actually have sort of a new discussion on this. This, according to BenchLife, motherboard vendors have been implementing this extreme profile ever since Intel's 9th gen Coffee Lake series of CPUs were released. So it's been years, years before the 13th gen. And as they say here, there were no widespread issues related to stability until the 13th slash 14th gen core series were released. Neither, and this is the important part, did Intel discourage these companies from adding such profiles or making them default out of the box. Meaning, once again, this does not at all appear to be issues related to motherboard vendors setting these. They've been doing this for years, but Intel CPUs had built-in features that wouldn't allow power to go absolutely wild or anything like that. While it seems like something with 13th and 14th gen CPUs is not allowing that to happen. And it appears to likely be an actual hardware issue Otherwise, Intel obviously would have released some kind of update that could fix this, but instead they're making these profiles default, which means this is their answer, meaning their answer is to make your CPU worse, which really makes me double down even more to say that reviewers really need to re-review their higher end 13th and 14th gen CPUs. And once again, this is not at all anything against reviewers or anything like that. They obviously had zero idea that anything like this was going to happen. Happen. It's fully understandable why they would have used the best of the best scenario to kind of show you, especially given we are actually talking about the default profile. And I certainly don't think there's anything wrong with testing these CPUs under defaults. Ultimately, things are not looking great for Intel. But what does look great is learning all about computer science from the place I trust the most and today's sponsor. Brilliant, the online learning platform that teaches you by getting you to actually do it yourself. I know I'm terrible at learning when someone hands me a book and tells me to read or just memorize a bunch of formulas. I've got to work it out myself and see how it actually works. And that's exactly what Brilliant lets me do with their hands-on interactive puzzles. From learning how a 
AI works with their new course on LLMs to coding and so much more. Plus, they guide you through the entire process with hints and explanations for why it works out the way it does. It's really the perfect learning tool. And today, when you visit brilliant.org slash gamermeld or use the QR code, you'll get a 30-day free trial. And when that's up, you'll get 20% off your premium membership for life. Once again, that's brilliant.org slash gamermeld or use the QR code. And next up for today, while going over Intel blunders, the company's next-gen Battle Mage discrete GPUs could in fact be delayed or even canceled. If you've been following the channel for a little while now, you know that a couple years ago, towards the end of 2022, Intel decided to move their gaming GPUs and CPUs under the same division. That obviously didn't look all that great, especially after Arc's lackluster release, the Alchemist release, and later, the head of Intel's graphics division, Raja Kaduri, left the company, followed by multiple others in their graphics division that were pretty high up, they all ended up leaving. Well, it's looking like this might all be coming to fruition for Intel and is really not looking good. As we have a new leak from this leaker right here, who I know, funny names aside, they have been very accurate in leaks in the past, and this time they actually said this. There is no trace of Battle Mage at all. There will be no DG3 next year. Now, when they say DG3 and therefore Battle Mage, it's pretty clear that they're referring to their discrete graphics cards. As WCCF Tech mentions down here, DG1 was released in 2020, DG2, which is Alchemist, and these are their discrete graphics cards, not integrated graphics, because we have actually discussed some Battle Mage GPUs in the past, and there's been some leaks that have been coming out about them, but those are likely, at least for the most part, integrated GPUs. This is referring to discrete graphics, and according to this, it's sounding like there will be zero DG3 this year and maybe not even next year, which at least to me sort of says they're not coming at all because I highly doubt that Battle Mage is so much more powerful that it can handle next gen GPUs as well as any kind of refresh that may happen in the next couple of years, things like that. It, it just really does not look good. And next up, it looks like AMD's next-gen Ryzen 9000 APUs are set to come in a ton of laptops, as ASUS seems to have accidentally confirmed pretty much their entire lineup. As you can see right here, this comes in a listing that ASUS did of their 240-watt compact plug adapter for notebooks. As you can see right here, it lists multiple compatible models and quite a few of these are brand new. And in fact, the model numbers have actually been decoded to show us that, as you can see, they are planning to release a ton of next-gen StrixPoint notebooks. You can see we have three under their Zephyrus G16 line, then we have three more under their Tough Gaming A14, then three more under A16, then we have two more under the Creator Pro Art P16 line, then finally three more under the Creator Pro Art X13. Basically, Jesus is seriously gearing up to release a ton of AMD notebooks. And this is looking really good just because for the most part, AMD's Ryzen APUs with notebooks really have been lackluster. Notebook providers don't typically provide the best of the best for AMD CPUs, and they really just seem to count them as sort of second fiddle. But at least according to this, it's definitely looking like things are getting better. So much so that Nvidia seems to be getting worried about AMD's next-gen APUs, specifically that Strix Halo lineup. Don't forget that Strix Halo is set to be an absolute monster of an APU with up to 40 CUs, which is even more cores than what's in their mid-range discrete desktop GPUs. So this is set to be a very serious potential blunder for Nvidia if they don't have something to counter these in the notebook space. Well, it's looking like they're working extremely hard on that. As you can see right here, this comes from a recent video from Moore's Law is Dead, where you can see right here, they're discussing Blackwell. And according to this source, it says, I would estimate that the laptop lineup is maybe one to two months behind in development compared to where Lovelace was at this point in 2022. And remember, I am only working on the laptop dies. So in other words, I have no clue when the 5090 or 5080 desktop GPUs will be ready, but... 
The laptop lineup isn't ahead of schedule or anything. Now, that's of course somewhat bad news just because it sounds like Nvidia is running a little bit behind, but this could be one reason why. As you can see, it says the heat resistance on the laptop 5090 and 5080 dies are the same. This suggests the laptop 5080 uses GB203. He goes further on to say that he can confirm that even some mobile chips we are testing use GDDR7 and PCI Express 5.0. Ultimately, what he's saying here is that Nvidia is not planning on nerfing their mobile 5080 like they did with the mobile 4080. As you can see right here, this is 8104, and you can see in 8104 is the 4080 mobile chip, but it's the faster and much better 8103 that the regular 4080 is based on, meaning Nvidia typically nerfs a lot of times their mobile GPUs when compared to their desktop counterparts. But with the next gen 5000 series, that doesn't look to be the case. So if this ends up being correct, it likely means that Nvidia is really getting a little worried about all this talk about AMD's next gen Strix Halo APUs. And you know what, at least from what we've seen, they definitely should be. And of course, as always, this once again proves just how important competition is to the market. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for Nvidia's next-gen RTX 50 series, or are you more excited about AMD's Strix Halo APUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to try out Brilliant for free at brilliant.org slash gamermelt. And as always, have a great day!